Bitcoin is becoming a very interesting topic. And so I think a lot of companies are interested in this. Private companies, public companies, high net worth individuals, and also institutional investors. And so I've had my fair share of conversation. I think that a company that's got a lot of cash would do well to convert some of that cash, <laughs> if not a lot of that cash, if not all of that cash to Bitcoin. Because if you have cash on your balance sheet, it's debasing at 10 to 15% a year. It's a liability. And over 10 years, you're going to lose 75% of your purchasing power. And on the other hand, if you flip it into, into Bitcoin, it's an accretive asset. You know, and Bitcoin's been going up 200% a year, but if it was going up 20% a year, you would end up doubling it, it, you know, like every every three years, and you would double it three times. And so you go from a billion to two billion to four billion to eight billion. So it makes sense for companies to convert their balance sheet from from liabilities to assets. And the right way to do that is by uh, by embracing Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot more companies putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. That's why we're doing this conference, that, uh, because there's a lot of demand. We've got, I've got thousands of customers, and a lot of them are coming out of the woodwork asking, how do you do this? Help, help us you know, work through the, the playbook, the regulatory issues, the due diligence issues, the acquisition, the custody, all these things make it easy for us. So um, it's really a popular demand right now. I think that... Um, I think that it wasn't on on corporations' radars in 2020. Mm -hmm. In March, people were shaken. After we did it in August, people started noticing. I think that a, a lot of early movers, you know, and people like Square, right, for example, yep. they started moving and Stone Ridge, a lot of private companies and I've talked to, they've already moved and you can see that. but. That, you know, for the the next tranche of public companies, I think you start to see them, uh, they'll trickle out in 2021 and, and you'll see a bunch, but 2020, over the next 36 months, it'll be a batch, then a double, triple batch, then what do they say, gradually, then suddenly, yeah, <laughs> then, then uh, quite a lot, right? So I just think you're going to see this growing. I think you'll see, already you'll see high net worth individuals, institutions, yeah you know, the fast money crowd, you know how it works. The, the fast <laughs> money investors on Wall Street, they're going to front run the big, the massive insurance companies, the massive publicly traded companies, but they're going to get in there a little bit earlier. And so I think you already see a lot of them like Ruffin, you know, like Guggenheim, yep. like uh, Skybridge, they're already moving, but you'll see a lot more of that. And then you'll You'll see some good announcements, I think, in 2021 from publicly traded companies. And and uh, I, I think that that's going to wake up more people. Sure. And they're going to realize something, which is Bitcoin's a monetary network. It's it's the first thermodynamically sound monetary network. And why wouldn't you want to plug into that thing if it turns your balance sheet into an asset instead of a liability? It's like oxygen mask dropping out from the space above your your seat in the airplane. I mean, more and more companies are going to actually start to grab that oxygen mask because it just makes a lot of sense. You know, it starts with the visionaries and then it's the early adopters and the high net worth and the family offices. And then it'll be the, the, the fast money and the hedge fund guys and then the private companies and then then small, nimble, and, and, and committed public companies, and then more public companies than every public company. And I think that there's, there's definitely going to be a place for agencies. You'll see agencies, you'll see nonprofits moving more aggressively. And eventually you'll see banks, central banks. You'll find that it'll be the central banks of the smaller countries first, right? I mean, the ones that, if your currency is completely collapsed, right? Yep. Right? Then uh, and you're you're thinking should we go with the gold standard or the Bitcoin standard or should we just use you know dollars or euros? It, it seems to me pretty clear that it makes sense to start to adopt the Bitcoin standard. I I think that uh, you know you should think of those as concentric layers, right? And so I think that uh, the largest central banks will be last. Mm. But I, it seems you know. An idea whose time has come 
it's a force it's coming it's just going to keep building now i want to talk about the threats to bitcoin uh, kind of us we were doing a swot analysis the strengths the weaknesses and so forth so the threats that are out there people have written off bitcoin thousands of times but it's still around what do you think about the tether situation as well as quantum computing and if there's some very strict regulations maybe coming from the united states which is the largest capital economy or market if you want to call it that um, there's definitely a lot of fud in this industry i've never seen so much <laughs> fud i don't know i i don't know why like for example like people that buy a billion dollars of apple stock don't sit around saying is tether manipulating at Apple stock price, or is the quantum computer going to destroy the Apple network? They're not, they're, there's a lot of people in the crypto industry, I think, that are very creative that are coming up with these things. With regard to Tether, I, it's completely irrelevant. I can't even imagine why anybody would take it seriously. Um, the people that are buying Bitcoin are wiring hundreds of millions of dollars of cash into an exchange, and they're buying Bitcoin. 500 million of money goes to some place, they buy 500 million of Bitcoin. That's what's going on. There are some people that, that wire 200, you know, some money into Tether and they use Tether instead of cash because they want to move it between Singapore or Malta or some offshore exchange. But it's really third order. And what does it matter that someone uses Tether? Right? I guess I guess the theory is something like someone's created an extra $20 billion of Tether and bought Bitcoin with it and it's not backed. But that means that they're short the Tether. And if someone ever calls it back, they're going to come up with $20 billion and they're totally out of luck. I don't believe that for a heartbeat. I think that that's silly. So so I, I thought I got some email and it just felt like it was a scammer. I feel like all the Tether FUD is like some kind of scammer distributing something. Well, um, but there's no no legitimate institutional buyer would even consider that. And I don't think they're even using Tether, right? In the US, they're not even using Tether sure. to buy Bitcoin. And most of the demand for Bitcoin is coming from the US. It's just US dollars getting wired into exchanges to buy.